Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Gender, Youth and Child Development Minister says the Children's Authority Act to give an improved child protection system. The Public Administration Minister praises the education system in this country. And food security in Trinidad and Tobago expected to become a reality soon. In our top story, the Ministry of Gender, Youth and Child Development hosted a training and sensitization workshop on the Children Act 2012. The workshop came under the theme safeguarding our children and took place at Aparia Suites Hotel, La Romaine. Speaking at the workshop, Minister of Gender, Youth and Child Development, the Honorable Marlene Coudry says, statistics from 2007 to 2011 revealed that there were 1,305 sexual offenses committed against minors, that is, children under 14 years of age. She adds from that amount, 783 or 60 percent involve persons under the age of 13. The minister underscores this trend is highly unacceptable. So that the government successfully led the charge for the passage of this children's, the Children Bill 2012, which is now the Children Act 2012. The act introduces new criminal offenses for dealing with sexual conduct against children and strengthen those that already exist. She says the Children's Authority Act and the Children Community Residences Foster Care and Nurseries Act sets out a new and improved child protection system. This act, she says, proposes to increase the age of protection of children to 18 years. To provide a court with the power to make a much wider range of orders which are in the best interest of the child, put mechanisms in place to monitor children who are abused and devise the best treatment plan appropriate for the child, and also have children assessed in assessment centers. And the ministry is already um, locating, and I think we have located one such um, venue for the assessment of children. And all these mechanisms are necessary in order to have the children's authority up and fully running. Another critical aspect of the Act is that the Children's Authority will play a critical role for children who have been abused and who come before the courts, which are just one of the changes that the Act proposes. It is very serious, it's more serious than people imagine outside there in terms of our children. Just, I think, Friday last, someone waited to see me for quite a while to relate that uh, a child was in a home family and was being abused there and that child was taken away and sent to a rel relative's home in another part of Trinidad and that relative was told this is what is happening here and we have brought this child for your protection and guess what that relative also started to abuse that child so it's a very very sad time indeed for us and we really need I've been appealing everywhere I go to look out for our children protect our children and report cases of child abuse. Whether you even suspect, we need to give the child, we need to give the children the benefit of the doubt in these cases. The Minister of Gender, Youth and Child Development says the Children's Act is part of a package of children's legislation that will encourage and facilitate the reporting of child abuse and ensure that victims are monitored and have better access to justice. Teachers, guidance, counselors, healthcare providers, caregivers, managers of children's homes and community-based organizations need to be eternally vigilant to ensure that victims have access to both to justice both under the existing criminal justice regime and the new strengthening legislation. Parliament for San Fernando West and Minister of Public Utilities, the Honorable Carlin Sipasad Bechen is praising what she believes is a solid education system in this country. Mrs. Sipasad Bechen expressed this belief while speaking at the 60th anniversary celebrations of the San Fernando Trinidad Muslim League Primary School. The San Fernando TML Primary School has held an awards ceremony as part of its 60th anniversary celebrations. The awards honor TML students who performed exceptionally well at the 2012 Secondary Entrance Assessment Examinations and the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations. Speaking at the awards, Mrs. Sipasad Bechan says 
The TML exemplifies the solid foundation the education system this country has. The Public Utilities Minister advocates that race and religion should never affect education. She praises the multi-ethnic and multi-religious mix, which she says makes our education system one of a kind. It is one of the incredible things about Trinidad and Tobago that we have Christians attending Muslim and Hindu schools, Hindus and Muslims attending Christian schools, and everyone, in fact, attending any school. Race is not a factor in terms of which school our children attend and are allowed into. This is one of the positives that make our country unique. What it says about us as a people is that we are confident that the values which we hold dear will be reinforced in whatever school we choose and that our religion would be respected whichever school our children attend. More it respects and reflects the fact that our family values, respect for authority, respect for God, and love of our country form the foundation of the education system in our country. While praising the school for its accomplishments, Mrs. Sipasad Bechan is issuing a challenge to the staff, students, and parents of the TML school. She is urging them to not only continue to ensure the school is successful, but to also never take success for granted. For this school today, this 60th anniversary represents a time of renewal of its commitment to its community, its constituents, our children. And I urge this institution and the board and to challenge all of you here this evening, the TML, parents, teachers and students, to reject complacency and to set your sights even higher in this year and the years ahead. The San Fernando West MP commends the school for the sterling contribution it has made to this country through years of dedication and hard work. Gregory McBurney, News 4. After the break, government plays with the level of output at the Tucker Valley Commercial Large Farm. Stay with us. Welcome back. State-operated commercial farm Tucker Valley has been surpassing the expectations of the Ministry of Food Production. There have been record outputs which the public will soon benefit from. Crop yields in Trinidad and Tobago are expected to increase significantly due to a number of initiatives by the Ministry of Food Production. One such initiative is the distribution of commercial grade seeds to farmers throughout the country. Minister of Food Production, the Honorable Devan Maharaj, recently toured the Tucker Valley Commercial Large Farm in Chagaramas. The farm commenced production in 2008 and is fully state-financed, operated and managed as a commercial farm with training facilities for farmers, agricultural students and persons with agricultural interests within the wider society. The farm had been operating on a labor shortage for quite some time until the Honorable Minister addressed the situation by ensuring that 25 persons fill the available vacancies. He says this move was one of necessity and great importance. This um, farm is very critical, as you know. This is one of the areas in Trinidad, um, very few areas, if not the only area, that has what is considered grade um, A1 um, soil. So the kind of um, seed material produced here um, in terms of genet genetic makeup and so on is of um, the highest quality. So therefore, the um, seeds provided to the farmers throughout the country um, would ensure that their crop yields continue to um, be as high as possible. He highlighted some of the activities which have been taking place on the farm. We had um, corn, over 10 acres of corn, um, and that's 40 acres of corn being scheduled to be planted later on. We also have um, the uh, Tobago peas behind us, um, no relation to the election, of course. Um, uh, and um, we have some areas set aside for pumpkin. Sorrel is already um, available here for planting. Minister Maharaj says he is pleased with the level of output from the farm. The experiment of having the la uh, increased labor force here for at least three to four months has yielded um, the kind of success we are looking for and we need to extend that program. So we have just discussed with the director on site here, probably exploring having agriculture URP or agriculture OJT 
continue to support the, um, the trust of the farm. The Honourable Minister says the innovative programme is expected to come to fruition in the near future. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. The dream of food security in Trinidad and Tobago is becoming a reality. This as NAMDEFCO is set to meet the needs of thousands of farmers in the country, while new technology is being implemented to increase productivity. Trinidad and Tobago is well on its way to achieving food security. The mandate of the National Agricultural Marketing and Development Corporation to, among other initiatives, provide agro-processing services as well as facilitate farmers and encourage them to produce. CEO of Namdevco, Krishna Ramratan, listed other activities that the corporation has been undertaking. We have given, given the mandate to build five packing houses, which we have just got the land and we have, have one going on in, in Coover. We're doing the survey, clearing the sites. So and the minister is really on to us, pushing us on that. Um, the Commodity Stabilization Fund is also there, which we're now going to operationalize. That will help us take some of these produce and to smooth out the prices. And as Mr. Michael says, we could contract farmers. We will be contracting. These are all the programs I'm, I'm working on now. Um, in terms of we are doing a bit of R&D with the cassava and the sweet potato, as I say, the minister is asking us to reduce the food import bill to take part of the cassava added to its white flour. We have done some of that. Mr. Ramratan responded to criticisms that the corporation has not been conducting any activities whatsoever. What has happened is that Namdevco, as the minister rightly said, we were really stripped down. In the last two months, I have, in fact, employed almost 30, 35 people. I've bring, brought back my field force. So all um, counties are now represented with a Namdevco field officer. Uh, which I'm very happy now we're getting in back to farm, doing the farm certification and waiting on the ministry to get to certify these farms. Farmers are accepting us, so things are happening and we are taking on the challenge as given by the minister and the ministry to get a food secure nation. He was speaking at the Marcus Maikou's farm in Maruga where an update was given on the initiative Harvesting of Cassava for Breakthrough in Agriculture, Increase in Productivity. It was about seven months ago that the initiative was launched by the Ministry in collaboration with Mr. Maiku, which is to be the benchmark to boost food production with the use of plant performance system biology technology. By employing best management practices, systems biology technology, grower training and timely field support, commodity team leader for root crops Nigel Grimes anticipates that there will be an increase in food productivity. With the types of yields that we are getting, and the potential to actually reduce the cost of production and simultaneously increase our output. It allows us now the opportunity to look in a really serious way of being able to substitute some of the commodities that we currently utilize, um, say for example, in terms of flour and utilization of white flour, which is imported. We can actually now utilize and produce flour from our root crops because now it becomes even more cost effective to utilize the root crops in that regard. The technology employs knowledge of the language of the plant along with treatments of biologically active compounds to maintain the crop hormonal balance and performance throughout the growing season. The technology is expected to make plants more resilient to stress caused by high temperatures, drought and continuous rainfall, floods, pests and disease damage. All input, whether it be pesticide or fertilizer, is almost ridiculous, is exceedingly low. But that is based on an improved understanding of the language of the plant and crop production. It is a tr easily transferable uh, language, it is easy to train the farmers. We need to set up a program as the, the CEO of Namdevco um, in, in food. Select farmers who may wish to become part of your program, whether it be contracted, as you said, you said there's a particular fund for that. Train them. Um, let's work with them through extension, through the research people, because while we are getting the kinds of yields that we want, we need, at this point still, to pass the technology through research. Mr. Maiku says the only problem the farm is facing is that of manpower from the area. Nevertheless, his farm is recording record-breaking yields, and he says his methods can be applied to all other crops. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Up next, the TNT Red Force returns home. Stay with us.
Dennis Ramden and his triumphant team returned from the Caribbean T20 Championship on Monday and were greeted by a host of officials at the VIP lounge of the Piaco International Airport. The squad successfully defended its title with some dominant cricket and now the players are looking forward to the big show, which is the Champions League T20 in India. Wayne Cunningham has more. Trinidad and Tobago secured a hat-trick title in the Caribbean T20 Championship with a nine-wicket win over Guyana on Sunday. The victory looked easy on the night, but on the team's return, Captain Dennis Ramdin said the road to the third title was a difficult one. It was hard work. <coughs> it wasn't easy. It wasn't... <coughs> Sorry. The tournament in South Africa where we didn't make it to the second rounds. <coughs> we were very disappointed in terms of not going on. And we decided to come together as a team, work hard, and have that opportunity again to go to South Africa, um, India again. The team was without strike bowler Ravi Rampol, but Ramdin was proud of the efforts of the younger players. Younger players like Shannon Gabriel, who didn't have the opportunity in D20 cricket for Trinidad and Tobago, stepped up as an international bowler when we then had the likes of Ravi Rampol, young Evan Lewis coming in to two games and he batted like he was a seasoned campaigner. To the management staff, fantastic. They did a great job keeping us on the path. The physio, the trainer, the coach ensured that everyone was tipped up shape to go out there and do their business. In the first round in Trinidad and Tobago, when we played, the support that we received from the crowd was amazing. You know, this team, when we went out there, we showed that passion, that drive. Every person who came to that stadium, I'm sure they got their money's worth coming to see and Tobago, demolish, win clinical at, at, at all those teams. Support from the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago was crucial in the preparation of the team. And Anthony Creed gave us some idea of the sums dispersed. The Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board has received support from the Ministry of Sport and by extension the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. During the last fiscal year, $3.2 million in funding was given to the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Team, Cricket Board, for high performance, sport development, and capacity building. I need to add that almost $4 million in funding went to the elite cricketers of our country. As Ambassador, President of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board was part of the welcoming party. And he had good news for those fans who were unable to get into the Oval for the sold-out match versus Guyana in the preliminary round. What we would like to announce to all those people with legitimate tickets is that for the Guyana leg of the Super 50 game that will be played here in Trinidad and also the four day game against Guyana, we will be allowing those persons with, with those tickets free entry into the stadium for the, all four days of the four day tournament and also for the game of the 50, the Super 50 game. And it should be noted also, and for the benefit of the national public, that the Super 50 game, it is a day night game. So we are making arrangements to make sure that you can come and at least be, at least be part of the audience at that, at that game. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. When we return, we'll tell you why Soka's royal couple, Bungie Garland and Fian Lines Alvarez, pulls out of the Soka Monarch competition. Stay with us. Welcome back. While the semi-final round went without them, Soka's royal couple, Bungie Garland and Fian Lyons Alvarez, are continuing to defend their decision to pull out of the Soka Monarch competition. News 4 caught up with the dynamic couple backstage at the Red Ant Stumped Cooler Fed. Mrs. Lyon Alvarez says they registered just days before the deadline and received their contracts dated January 9th, two days before the semi-final draw. Upon seeing the contracts, the couple decided that once again, they would withdraw from the competition. We were given contracts 
two days before, basically, management got it, but by the time we reviewed it, it was Wednesday was the price, the, um, the, the draw. draw for numbers, right. So basically by the time we reviewed it, we realized that the contract was not really favorable, so to speak. So we decided, you know what, since we can't enter the competition without signing the contract, we would have to bow out. No malice, no, no anything. We, we didn't ask to have the contract altered or changed to suit us. We're simply saying that it's within our, our rights to not sign a document we're not comfortable with the terms and the, and the, the, the arrangement that it contains. The couple says even though their fans were anticipating their comeback in the Soka Monarch arena, their decision to pull out from the competition has not affected them negatively. They have been receiving an overwhelming show of love and support. That's what true fans do. You know, in, in the time of down, they still stick with you and give their support. And all the fans of Penn and, and, and Bungie, we are very, we thank God for them. We pray for blessing for them right through because... I mean, they didn't bong the, they could have just said, well, we ain't who, we don't want to hear, we don't understand. But they came out on Twitter, Facebook, we, we, we understand, we're disappointed, but we're giving all that support still because, you know, we know they're doing it for some reason that is in depth because that's the kind of people we are, we're in depth. Bungie Garling explained that far too many artists had signed the contract without properly reviewing it. We're not crazy to just look at the, 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 the contract and, you know, as Payan was saying earlier, um, we didn't want to we, we didn't want to go to negotiate any terms in particular for us. It would be unfair to the rest of artists. So we just respect the contract. It, it, we're not really liking everything and we leave it alone. It just blew up the mushroom cloud into something else. Adding to the excitement of their return was the fact that Lion's father, five-time Soka Monarch champion Super Blue, had also made a comeback after an over decade-long hiatus. All Soka Music fans and the public at large were anticipating a grand showdown at the Hazley Crawford National Stadium on Carnival Friday between Lions Alvarez, Super Blue, Iowa George, and defending Power Soka champion Marshall Montano, as well as the clash between Bungie and Montano in the groovy category. And that's how we wrap up our News for Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.